Check it out, Steam has Flickstick. Well, the beta version anyway. Many of you already know, I'm Jib Smart, game developer, YouTuber, creator of the Flickstick, and Valve have added Flickstick to Steam and very generously mentioned me in the description for the feature. I created Flickstick about two years ago. For a long time I was just using it on my own until I had a public version of Joystick Mapper out about one and a half years ago. And for a long time, Joystick Mapper was the only way to play with Flickstick. Now Steam has it working as well, and this is awesome. I'd always hoped that Flickstick would become a feature in games and in input mappers like Steam, and to see it actually happening makes me really excited. I maintain GyroWiki, which has a bunch of resources for developers on how to implement Flickstick, how to implement really good gyro controls, uh, probably better than I've seen in any game so far. And the purpose of these resources is just so that I can play your games without having to use software I created to play them. Of course, I care a lot about Joyshock Mapper and the community that's using it, and we have other developers involved with Joyshock Mapper now as well, which is really cool. One of the goals of Joyshock Mapper at the beginning was to demonstrate features that other software should implement and other games should include, and the hope has been that these would be standard features in future. So to see it in Steam is a really big step, and I'm really excited. Valve's description of how Flickstick works is very simple, very succinct. So if, if you don't have time to check out one of my other videos, this will probably do for you. Tilting the flick stick at any angle relative to forward will flick the camera to face that angle in-game, and as you rotate the stick while it's still tilted, the camera will make the same rotation in-game. It's really good for covering your back, watching all directions, uh, but because it doesn't provide any way to do any vertical aiming, it needs to have gyro aiming at the same time to handle that. Steam has a pretty good gyro aiming implementation as well, and maybe another time in another video, I'll get into what Joystick Mapper does differently with the gyro and why I do it that way. But my experience with Steam has been that its gyro aiming is better than I've seen in any game. I think Joystick Mapper improves on that, but that's for another time. When you're setting up Flickstick, the most important setting is mouse sensitivity. This is telling Steam how far it needs to move the virtual mouse to complete a flick of a given angle in the game. This slider is just on a zero to one scale, the number itself isn't going to be particularly meaningful to the player, and that doesn't particularly matter, because each game has a different sensitivity scale anyway, and each player is going to be playing with different sensitivity settings. But as long as mouse acceleration is disabled, this should do the trick. Those familiar with Joystick Mapper know it works a little bit differently. There's a bit of calibration done on a per game basis that means your gyro settings are real world values, and that same calibration is used to make Flickstick work correctly. Steam doesn't do that, so it makes a lot of sense that they have just one slider that you can adjust until you get your flicks right, until you get your rotations right. So I experimented with it in Portal, and all I did was rotate the right stick and see how far that turns me. If doing a 360 with the right stick doesn't do a full rotation in-game, then I increase the sensitivity. If doing a full rotation with the right stick does more than a complete rotation in the game, then I decrease the sensitivity until I got to something I'm happy with. If you're not sure if it's exactly right, it doesn't have to be exactly exactly right, but if you're not sure if it's in a really good place, you can do multiple rotations and any error will accumulate. If you're overshooting, it will overshoot more and more each rotation. If you're undershooting, it will undershoot more and more each rotation and that can help you configure this correctly. So I found that easy to do and it's really cool to be able to control the camera like this without using my own software. Now a lot of people have shared with me their negative experiences with trying to get a 180 to work properly with Steam's Flickstick. And I bumped into that a bit as well. Once you have your rotations configured correctly, your smaller turns should be configured correctly as well. It's the exact same mouse movement, just over a shorter period of time. However, because Steam's flicks are instant, and because of the way they do their virtual mouse events, there's a limit to how far the mouse can move in a given moment. And that's what this game frame rate setting is supposed to help with. So if you pull your stick back to do a 180, and your in-game sensitivity is low, Steam has to move the virtual mouse very, very far to be able to complete that 180. And Steam is unable to move the mouse further than half the width of the screen, working under the assumption that the game is keeping the mouse in the center of the screen, and until the game has responded to the mouse movement, you only have the distance from the center of the screen to the edge of the screen available to you for the mouse to move. This isn't an issue I had encountered with Joystick Mapper, and I hadn't really considered it. It makes intuitive sense to me, and 
I assumed that Joyshock Mapper didn't need it because Joyshock Mapper, by default, spreads its flick over a longer period of time. Joyshock Mapper gives you a flick time setting, which starts at a tenth of a second. And so spreading a 180 over 100 milliseconds is a whole bunch of much smaller mouse movements than trying to do a 180 in an instant. So I figured that's why I never came up against that problem before. However, of course, this is configurable. So I set flick time to zero and decided to give it a go and found that I wasn't having any problems with it. I even brought Portal's mouse sensitivity as low as it could go, which means Joyshock Mapper or Steam would need to do a really, really, really big mouse movement in order to complete the 180 flick and found I still wasn't having any problems with the Joyshock Mapper. So I'd say that the way Steam is sending virtual mouse movements to the game is different to how Joyshock Mapper is doing it. Joyshock Mapper's code is very simple and useful for doing relative movements. Gyro, flick stick, and traditional stick aiming all control the mouse in the same way, just by sending mouse movements. It doesn't care where the mouse was, where it's going to be. It's just telling Windows that it's sending a relative mouse movement event. Some of the other features in Joyshock Mapper require setting the mouse's position absolutely, like mouse ring and mouse area. And my guess is that's what Steam is doing everywhere. I don't know for sure, so don't quote me on it, but this could explain why Steam can only move the mouse so far in a given frame, and why you'd need the game frame rate setting to divide that mouse movement over multiple frames. My guess is this difference between the way Steam sends its mouse events and Joyshop Mapper sends its mouse events is also responsible for the horizontal to vertical gyro sensitivity ratio not being quite correct. Steam settings will tell you that at 50%, the size is halfway up, your X sensitivity should be the same as your Y sensitivity. That's not actually the case. I found the ratio there is actually the same as my screen ratio, uh, 16, 9. So I think these are both different side effects of the way Steam communicates differently to the way Joyshop Mapper communicates. Now the fact that the slider is on a 0 to 1 scale is quite unhelpful for the user in my opinion. Um, the description here says this value should be slightly slower than the game's frame rate but uh, the game's frame rate isn't going to be on a 0 to 1 scale. Uh, so there's going to be some trial and error there, and I found that I couldn't get it working with Portal. If any of you have been able to get it working with Portal, I tried bringing Portal sensitivity all the way down, all the way up. Um, I couldn't get it into a place where it was working well for me. So I'll be passing this feedback on to the developers. And hopefully this video is going to be very out of date very soon. This feature is in beta, they're looking for feedback, and the developers, I have no doubt, really appreciate those who encounter problems coming to them with their problems. Letting the developers know, this is what I've been doing, these are the issues I've encountered. This helps them paint a clearer picture of what's going wrong and uh, helps them work around the issues. So I'll be giving them my feedback as well. Now two things that are really important here. One is that I don't actually know how Steam works internally. So there's some speculation on my part here. I know how Joyshock Mapper works internally. I wrote the original version of Joyshock Mapper. I wrote how Flickstick and Gyro all work. I know how to get them working the way Joyshock Mapper uses them. But Steam offers a lot of other features in the way that the gyro or mouse or stick interact with the game. And these likely necessitate absolute control over the mouse. So it might be a very big ask for the Steam developers to implement their flick stick differently to the way they're doing it at the moment. I don't know. The second thing is that Joyshock Mapper and Steam are complementary. They each have weaknesses and strengths. I'm working on Joyshock Mapper's weaknesses and also trying to strengthen its strengths. Steam's developers are working on Steam's weaknesses and also trying to improve its strengths as well. But Joyshock Mapper and Steam are totally compatible. You can use them both at the same time. Check out my Doom video if you want to see how I use Steam to isolate the left stick and still get that nice analog movement for really good dashes while letting Joyshock Mapper handle flick stick and gyro aiming. Steam and Joyshock Mapper are friends. I'm very excited to see Steam implementing some of Joyshock Mapper's features. And of course, Joyshock Mapper would hugely benefit from some of Steam's features. Steam is much more user friendly, having a graphical user interface, auto updating, stuff like that. Steam has a lot of advantages of its own over Joyshot Mapper. Use each of them for where they have strengths, and if possible, if you're using a controller that's compatible with both of them, such as the DualShock 4 or the Switch Pro controller, use them both together and have a better controller experience than anyone else in gaming. Big thanks to all those who've been letting me know that Steam has added Flickstick. I'm super excited, I'm glad you're excited as well. Keep giving me feedback about Joyshock Mapper. Keep giving Val feedback about Steam input. The Joyshock Mapper developers and I are listening. The Steam developers are listening. 
and we can't fix any problems we don't know about, so keep letting us know. We appreciate your patience and your grace as you're doing so, and thank you so much for being involved with the evolution of controller gaming. Keep it up, watch this space for more, and let's change how games are played.